Welcome everyone to our QI testing training. This is a beginner course for every new QA who wants to learn about API testing. We will start our training with an introduction. What is an API? How API works? And a demo to see APIs in browsers. Next, we will have a quick tour to use the Postman tour. And we will learn how to import APIs from the browser to Postman. Then we will have videos on testing strategy, how we can test parameters and output. Lastly, we will have a walkthrough on test automation using Postman. I hope you enjoy the course. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to our introduction to API testing video. We will start by defining what is API. API stands for Application Programming Interface which basically just means that it's one piece of code talking to another piece of code. This could be your website talking to a database backend. It could be a mobile application talking to an authentication service. An API lets one application use the capabilities of another system. This means that if you want to build an e-commerce application, you can concentrate on building only your product. You can use the API of different applications for payments, billings, authentications, or others. The way that an API works is through a contract. The three main components of an API are request, response, and resource. You would make a request to a server which, is, which includes an endpoint, method, headers, and a body. The server will return a response that will contain its own sets of headers, body, and also a status code. For example, if you want to place a new order for a shared in an e-commerce store, you would click on the order button. When you click on that button, your browser sends a request to the server. The e-commerce server will send a response to your browser after creating a new order, which is the resource in this case. What are the different methods we have? Most common is get, it is used to request data from a server. Post, it is used to send some data to the server. Delete is used to delete a specified resource. Patch is used to partially modify a resource. Put is used to update the entire resource on the server. When the server returns a response, a three-digit number is also sent as a part of the response. This three-digit number is also known as the status code. For example, a successful GET request will return a 200 status code. APIs come in different shapes, their level of openness and purpose. APIs which can only be accessed within the boundaries of one organization are referred to as closed APIs or private APIs. These private APIs can be for internal use within the corporate firewall. Often, private APIs are built to enhance process automation inside the company between systems. Open APIs is an interface that has been designed to be easily accessible by the wider population of web and mobile developers. This means an open API may be used both by developers inside the organization that publish the API or by any developers outside that organization who wish to register for access to the interface. Now, how can we view APIs in our browsers? In Chrome, using the developer tools. We will take a look through our live example. In this video, with a live example, we will go through everything we learned in the past video. In Chrome, go to udemy.com. Then we go to Developer Tools. We have several tabs in Developer Tools. Make sure to choose Network. Because APIs are communicating over the network. Then choose XHR which is for HTTP request. Let's search for a course. I'm searching for software testing. 
While searching for a course, you can see requests are being displayed with search criteria. Let us now narrow it down to a single API. This API is a search suggestion, which is actually called every time we type a letter into the search box. Let's open one, for example, software. This has all the elements we were talking about. We have request URL, request method, status code, which was uh, okay. That means that the request was successful, it's 200. We can see also the response headers, the request headers, which are pretty basics. Also in the payload, we can see the request parameters. Here, for example, it's software. Then the, in the response, but we, we can see it in preview actually in more detail, the results. Here we can see the results of our request and we can see uh, it's uh, getting the courses software development and the other courses. Let's go to another instance. It will give us another results depending on the payload itself. For example, here is software plus test. We can go to software testing here also. It's uh, get us the results according to software testing. And the other stuff are uh, pretty basics and the same. Now let's go to Firefox and open web developer tools. Same as uh, Chrome, we go to network. We can put here XHR and you can do the same software testing. We can see actually the APIs here. You can see the request, the response, and pretty basic, the same as Chrome. So now that we've talked about what APIs are, and we've looked at how we can explore them in websites, let's look at a tool that will help you really play with APIs and explore what they can do and what they can't do. So the tool we're going to use is Postman. To install it, go to Postman page. Click to download desktop app. Once there, choose the correct executable for your platform. Download it and it will install very easily. Now, after we downloaded Postman and we open it, let's take a really quick tour. When you start the app, for the first time, you land on the home page. For now, let's hit workspaces and take a look. This is, as the term implies, the space where you will do your work. Think of it as a folder. It's where you see a high level view of your APIs. And it can be private to you, or it can be a team workspace that you share with other people. Let us create new workspace and name it API testing training. Select personal. Now we are in our new workspace. On the left hand panel, we have all the key features of the Postman platform. Collections are where uh, you organize your APIs into groups. APIs show you all the APIs that you're working with. Environments are really important. This is where you can group your variables according to the environment you want to run them in, whether that's prod, development, QA, or others. Let's try an API example. I will copy paste this URL. It's an API request for getting current time information. And I press send, I get the response. After I do that, I can go to history. I can open up previous requests and send them again. I can see what happens if I do something a little different. See what are the errors are. I have the status information, 
the size of the download, the amount of time it took, all the information I need to better understand my API. So that's the most basic functionality of Postman. Now let's combine Postman with the APIs we see in web development tools we were looking at before. Let's go to Amazon site. Click to open developer tools. In developer tools, make sure we are on network and XHR is selected. Let's start searching in Amazon and type software. While we are typing, an API suggestion is called on every click. Click on a request to view the details. You can see the results, prefix, and all the details. Now, right click on the request and click on cop copy curl. Go to Postman and click on Import. And go to Raw Text. Paste the curl you copied, click Continue and then click Import. You will see the get request with all the details, URL, parameters, and headers. Click to send to run the request. We can see that the request is successful, and you can see the status is 200 OK. In result, we see the prefix and the suggestions displayed when searching for software. Let's play a little bit with this API. Change the prefix and click Send. We will see different results displayed. Let's try removing some parameters and click Send. It is still working with no issues. Now let us save the API. Name it Get Amazon Search. Add this API to a collection. Name it API Training. And click Save. So in this video, we learned how to import an API from Developer Tools to Postman and run it. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss the test strategy for API testing. To start, we need to add set of APIs for us to test. Go to RESTful Booker. As mentioned in the website, RESTful Booker is a list of APIs that you can use to learn more about API testing or try out API testing tools against. Let us add all these APIs to our own collection. Go to API documents. You can see here in the left, the list of APIs. Each API has its curl. Copy each curl and import it to your collection in Postman. Let's copy authentication. Import authentication curl. You can see in this curl the username and password we need to, uh, to use it to be signed in. Create collection and name it RESTful Booker. Name the request authentication and save it in our collection we created. Run it and you see it successfully with a token and 200 OK. This token will be used later in post and the delete and uh, update requests.
Here I gathered all requests into my collection. You can see get all bookings or get bookings by ID, post request, which is create new booking. We can update a booking either with a full booking information or with partial booking information and we can delete. In this video, we will see how environments work. Copy the main URL and go to the top right where it says no environment. Click on the eye icon. In the environment section, click on add. On this page, we can add a new environment. Environment for prod, staging, or dev, or any other environment. Let us name it RESTful Booker dash environment. In variable name, type URL. In initial value, paste the URL you copied before. Let's update the title to environment prod and save. Open the drop down of environments and you can see the one created. Select it. Go to Get Authentication API, remove the URL. Open the uh, double braces and type URL. If you mouse over the URL, you can see the values it is reading. Click Send, you see it work normally. Update the URL of all the requests we have. In this case, we can use the same request over and over and just change the environment whenever we need. In this video, we will start our API testing strategy by testing parameters. To test parameters, we can use basic black box testing techniques. We can use equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis. As an example, we can enter values like valid input, invalid input, empty string, null, removing parameter, input to spaces, type checking, or others. According to the result we get, we can understand the API requirement more and more, and if we have any box. Let us go back to Postman, authenticate first, then go to create new booking. We will be testing each of these values. Let's apply what we mentioned in our presentation here. Let's enter empty string in the first name, then send, we get 200 OK. Same for last name we get the same result. It seems they are not required field, although logically they should be. Remove the last name parameter, we get an error. Let us do type testing and deposit paid. It should be Boolean, so add any string and test. It is saving as yes, although it shouldn't be. We can also do different date testing and see the result. Here check-in is after check-out. We don't have any validation in this. In total price, enter string instead of number and click on send. I'm getting none. So this is a small demo that shows us how we can test parameters. Thank you. The next part of our testing strategy is output. Output could be a response, status code, logging, or output format that we need to double check that is correct. Now let's go to Postman and see some examples.
to work on delete booking, let's authenticate, then look at delete booking. Set up the delete booking and click on send. We get a 201 created status, which is an odd response. The most common responses is 200 OK or 204 to make sure it happened. This is an output error. Another way to control the output is through the headers. The default is to have it in a JSON format. We can change it to XML, which might be better for certain services. Let's change this to accept application XML. And now when I send it, I get a response back in an XML format, which is fine. Let's see if this is working for getting all the bookings. Once again, by default, it does a JSON format. When we do this with the get all booking, it's still sending JSON. So we obviously have an issue here where this endpoint is not processing the header correctly. Final check is logging output. Let's go to create new booking. In body, change deposit page to null. Click send. and we get a 500 error. When we look at our logs, all it's saying is 500. We're not getting any extra information here. In this video, we'll do some extra testing scenarios. Go to create new booking. And change the date format to day, month, year. An invalid date is displayed. Change it to month, day, year, and click send. This format is accepted. This kind of information should be communicated in the API documentation. In another test, go to get booking by name, and click send. We get a list of booking IDs. We need to take each ID and have another API call to get the details to get the info we want. This kind of info should also be communicated. This affects the performance of the search we are displaying. In another test, we can go to get authentication Click send, we get a token and 200 OK. If I enter an incorrect password, I still get 200 OK, but with an error message. Usually applications assume 200 OK is a successful request. This should be a 401 unauthorized response. This is some scenarios we should check when we test APIs. In this video, we'll learn about test automation with Postman. We'll learn how to create tests for an API and how to run them in a collection. In Postman, open create new booking. We can see here a tab called tests. Click on it, we will see a section of snippets of codes using JavaScript. Clicking on one of them, Example status code 200, add the code to the tests. This is a test to verify that the API gave us uh, status 200. Click send. Open test results, the test has passed. Let us add another test. 
We can only use the function and change its name to get booking ID. In the snippets, we have code to set a variable either as an environment global or collection variable. As an example, click on the global variable. Name the variable booking ID. To get the value, type pm dot response dot json dot booking id click send test passed if we open the environment list we can see the booking id and its current value we can use this variable we saved in get booking by id Instead of the number, open double braces, type booking ID, and close them. Click Send. API returns the booking information we just created. Now let us move these two tests into a new collection. Name it Automation. Copy-paste the tests. Run them to make sure everything is okay. In Get Booking by ID, add the status code check. Click Send and validate test passes. Now click on the three points and click on Run Collection. You can see here the settings. If you want to run the collection on several iterations, upload a data file and others. Click on Run Automation. You will see the result of running both tests and everything passed. So this is a small demo how to run tests in a collection in Postman. In this video, we will be talking about mocking and how to create a mock server in Postman. Mocking is basically faking, pretending, and there are many reasons that we testers might want to take advantage of this feature against APIs in Postman. It can be used when production APIs are not ready. If we do not want to use requests against real data also. Advantages of this feature is that it simulates the behavior of real APIs with examples. You can test your API request with mock data. All possible scenarios can be tested without hitting the real server. Now let's go to Postman and see how it works. Let us start by creating a new collection. Name it Mock API. Copy paste get booking by name to our new collection. Update the name and remove copy. Now in collection, select mock collection. Create mock server form is displayed. Add mock server name. Let's name it mock booking APIs. We have the collection already selected. Make sure no environment is selected. Check save the mock server URL as an environment variable. And click on create mock server. Now we can see mock server is created and the URL is displayed and we can copy it. If we go to environments, we can see the new environment is created with the mock server name. 
Now let's run get booking by name against production. It gives 200 OK and all booking IDs. In case if I want to have another results against mock server, I can click on add an example. I can enter the status code result I want to have. Let's add example 400 bad request. In the body, I left it as text and added the result. Now save. Go back to main API. And if I run it against production, it gives 200 OK with the correct results. If I change the environment to mock server, I get 400 bad requests and the body I added in the example. 